What's up guys, Caesar Media here. Today I'm driving in one of my favorite cars of all time. This is a Nissan Skyline GTR R32. And before I begin my video, I wanna thank my friend John from Otaku Garage for this very unique opportunity. He specializes in importing cars like this and he can also get you a lot of JDM parts and his shop specializes in other Nissan vehicles as well. So if you are in Michigan, Metro Detroit area, make sure to hit him up for any JDM car inquiries. Nissan Skyline GTR has gotta be one of the most iconic cars that came out from Japan in the 90s. You got the Supras, you got the RX-7s, you got the NSX, and of course you had the Nissan Skyline GTRs. Here in North America, because Nissan did not produce or distribute the Skylines in uh, anywhere outside of Japan other than lucky countries like Australia, you had to import a Nissan Skyline if you wanted to drive this in North America. Because a Nissan Skyline does not pass the US safety standards as well as emission requirements, you could not import the R32 Skylines legally to North America and drive it around on the streets. Of course, a lot of people attempted importing these cars. They would break it apart in pieces, put it in a container, ship it over from Japan to North America, reassemble it and register it as like a Nissan 240SX. But a lot of those cars got cut and got impounded. Another way you could import these and drive around is to drive it as a show car or kick car or a track car, but then you can't drive that on the streets legally. So for the longest time, Nissan Skyline was the car you could only drive in your Forzas, in your Gran Turismo. It has always been that like a, a car that you could not buy even if you wanted to. The Skyline I'm driving today is 100% legal and the reason why this car is legal is because 25 years has passed since this car has been manufactured. In North America, if a car's manufacturing date is more than 25 years, so 2015, bring that back 25 years, that's 1990, cars that was manufactured before 1990 can now be imported. This car has more than a decade of history since it was first produced and not many people here in North America know about it because to us it's a brand new car that just recently started getting imported. As most of my fellow Nissan enthusiasts know, Nissan always had this rivalry with the Porsche manufacturing team and racing team. It was no different back in the 80s when Nissan produced the R32 GTR. One of their goals was to be faster than the Porsche 944, which had the Nürburgring lap time record of 8 minutes and 45 seconds. And when the Nissan took the R32 GTR to the Nürburgring, it beat that record by almost 25 seconds. When Nissan took the R32 GTR and entered it into the Japanese Touring Car Championship for the first time in 1989, during the qualifying lap, Nissan beat the fastest lap by two seconds. And after that, Nissan won races back to back, not losing a single race for three years in a row, winning 29 races. Same story with the Australian Touring Championship. When Nissan took the car over there, it beat the winning streak, which was set by the Ford Cosworth Sierra car. It dominated that car, and that's when Australian journalist saw the car and he said, what is this monster from Japan? What is this crazy car that's dominating in the racing world? And that's where the name Godzilla came from. All right, so that's enough of history lesson for you guys. And now let's talk about the specs. RB26 DETT is kind of well known and legendary, similar to the Toyota's 2JZ engine that comes out of Supra. It's a 2.6 liter twin turbo engine. Now, this car is, from what I have heard, known to make about 300 to 320 horsepower from factory. However, back in the 80s, Nissan, as well as all other Japanese car manufacturers, had a gentleman's agreement within the OEM car manufacturers that basically said you cannot make a car that is faster than 300 horsepower and I believe it was about 280 horsepower to be exact 
and that is why this Nissan Skyline from factory out of spec is rated at 280 horsepower what's interesting with the gentleman's agreement is that you know a lot of Japanese car manufacturer said 280 horsepower but not many of them were actually only making 280 horsepower when you buy the Nissan Skyline R32 GTR completely stock open the hood there's a yellow tab yellow hose which is connected to the boost restriction system so Nissan basically added these restrictions to turn the engine from reaching more than 280 horsepower so all you have to do is unplug this yellow tab, yellow hose, and you're getting instant boost increase. And exhaust has a lot of restriction from factory. You can swap that out. You can do other things here and there, and you can make, easily make, more than 300 horsepower of these cars. And another thing about the RB26 DTT engine and its power is that I hear all these people making, you know, seven second passes, eight second passes in their brand new R35 GTR which is of course known as the modern day Godzilla but I'm like you know what the R32s, R33s back in the 80s and 90s were also doing quarter mile passes in 8 seconds and 7 seconds making like a thousand closer to 2000 horsepower ふくへ The fact that people were squeezing more than a thousand horsepower out of these 2.6 liter engines in the 80s and 90s just simply mind-blowing and not many people realized what kind of capability this car has in terms of suspension of course this car came with great suspension geometry and one of the unique features that came with this which is similar to the Nissan 300 ZX that all of you should be familiar with is that it has all-wheel drive steering what it means is that the wheel wheel will turn up to a degree when you're turning into the corner and that basically supports with understeer and helps support turning when you're hitting that apex however the fact that this all-wheel steering technology was invented in late 80s early 90s it wasn't exactly refined it wasn't really a reliable system a lot of people felt that the system would kick on mid-corner out of nowhere setting the car way out of apex way out of where it's want to go and it was kind of dangerous for some people so a lot of people tend to deactivate we uh, remove the rear steering system out of these cars what I love about Japanese cars from the 90s is that the interior it's so driver oriented Especially in like the Supra or so the 300ZX, it looks like a fighter jet cockpit and it's not as aggressive as the Supra or so the 300ZX but the Nissan Skyline also has a driver oriented cockpit. Everything you need is right in front of you and even the center console is tilted toward the driver so you have better view and better access to all the buttons if needed. Now I'm gonna try to take this car around corners and see how it handles and uh, Skyline R32 actually weighs 3100 pounds which I think is extremely light for a all-wheel drive car that has a six-cylinder engine in it my Evo which is a four-door four-cylinder all-wheel drive car from the year 2003 still weighs 3320 pounds so compared to that this car is extremely light once you get used to when driving this car is that everything is in international standards you got celsius here in the h-back system in the center console and the gauge in front of you is in kilometers which goes up to 320 kilometers which is like 200 miles per hour and that is crazy coming out of a five-speed car made in the 80s another thing you get used to really fast is the turning signals the indicators is on the right hand side of the steering column in the first five minutes of driving this car my left hand naturally did this and i was like where is the turning signal 
other than the obvious items like the center console in Celsius and the JDM cluster over here, there's a lot of Japanese bits and pieces. You look up here in the sun visor, it's in 100% Japanese. You look at the VIN number on the car, it's Japanese. There's a tiny tissue holder, you only see that in Japanese cars. And what's funny for this car is that there's cigarette smoke suction system. So you turn on the switch and there's a tiny fan in the back that sucks up the cigarette smoke out of the car and into the trunk. That really just screams JDM, screams the 90s and 80s and the smoking culture. As all of you know, Japanese tend to smoke a lot, especially back in the days. This car also has shit tons of parts in the trunk. It's basically gonna go in storage for the winter time, waiting to be upgraded. So it's not in its best performance right now. All right, I'm gonna see how this car does in a straight line here. I'm not gonna go all out because it's a right-hand drive car. It's not my car, I don't wanna get pulled over. Ah, uh, it's misfiling. That is unfortunate, but the car seems like it's misfiring and I really don't want to push it. <laughs> this car sounds so good. driving this car around for a couple hours really getting a good feel of the car of course it's agile of course it's fast it's a, and then there's an old man looking at me so confused and that's what this car is about it's not it's a magnificent magnificent car magnificent engineering achievement from the 80s but it's more than just the performance of the car it's about the culture of Nissan Skyline it's about the history it's about appreciating the right hand drive super unique Japanese car and people go so much out of their way to own a car like this thanks again for watching my video guys if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so and check out my other car reviews there will be more videos coming in the future and let me know what kind of cars you want me to review in the future Thank <laughs> you.